Buy, sell, trade. Buy, sell, trade. Stonks and bonds and stonks and bonds. That's how money was made. I understand. <laughs> Wake up. Time to get up. Time to get that coffee going. Time to, uh, you know, wake your senses, your neurons getting firing. Get ready for the day. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, today on the pod, we have a special guest star, Davis Batista, son of Dave Batista, famous WWE wrestler. We're really excited to have you here. Can you tell us any secrets about your dad? Did he ever kiss the rock on the lips? For real? I told you not to bring that up, man. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, you can tell a different secret. secret. <laughs> Gosh. My bad. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, this is the That Was Mint podcast uh, number two on the new channel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're Number two with Son of Batista. With the Son of Batista. <laughs> so are you thinking of following in your dad's footsteps? I guess that's a good first lead off question. Mm. Possibly. Possibly. Hmm. Possibly. The only way I could feasibly do it is if in my first match, you know, on uh, WWE yeah. Raw. Or was he? Was my dad on SmackDown? I think he was on SmackDown. He was on SmackDown. I honestly couldn't. I, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I know nothing I about just the sounds WWE. Right. It just sounds right. Yeah, okay, so um, in my first match on SmackDown, I'd only be willing to come back if I got to fight the one, the only, the Macho Man Randy Savage. <sighs> Macho, Macho Man. Man! Well, yeah, brother. I guess you're calling him out here. Macho Man. Yeah, Macho you... Man, I'm coming for you, baby. Woo! Oh, man. Well, on the, on the, that was the podcast. We just had, we a, just had a, a... Wow. Wow. Where's... Uh, where, who's in charge of it all? Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon? Uh, I know he's with Raw. All right, Vince, hit us up. <laughs> Vince McMahon. Did you guys ever see the video of him trying to get jump into the ring and he blows <laughs> out both his Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Vince McMahon memes are, I love Vince, <laughs> premium. You seen that video of him walking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just like this. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I love him. He's just as insane as the w- maybe the WWE is just his brain. Well, yeah, he's he doesn't he own the XFL too. Oh, ma- makes sense. Or like he's he at does. least like a co-owner, like a co-founder or something. Can we get him on the podcast? I don't think oh. you want Vince McMahon. He's one of. The he's oh man, McMahon. that would be lit. I would love having him on, but also like that's gonna be so unhinged if you get Vince. Is McMahon. he crazy? Uh, probably. I Isn't mean. I don't know. Maybe he's a cool guy off screen. Uh, well, we have to find out. I mean, well, I know the WWE is like terrible working conditions like for wrestlers. <laughs> Isn't that true? Like <laughs> probably. Like they've like wrestlers have come out and like died at like 30 cuz they're they're just their brains have been totally fried by all the concussions that they get. I thought I thought it was all fake. I thought it's fake. No, it's real. I mean, it's fake, but it, you know. They actually get smacked. It's fake, but you still get you're still wrestling okay, a little bit. I see. So, like, it's fake, but he still slams your head into the mat, and they just say kind of deal with it? Yeah, it but is? you plan for it, and yeah. there's ways to, like, absorb it. Okay. They, they train you on, like, oh, you'll actually get hurt if you do this wrong. Mm. Um, hmm. But, like, you know, it's like how football players... Like, well, they got to get bloodied up, too, right? Yeah, they, get act- they actually get hurt, but, like, it's all planned. Yeah. There's a script for it. It's but it's like a stuntman show, mm-hmm. you know. How, how do you get practice getting hit by a chair? I, That's what I want to know. You well, just, you're gonna have to do it, so I hope you <laughs> you would have researched this by now. I s- you just <laughs> called out Randy Savage. Have so, you ever wrestled? Yeah, but you think Randy Savage needs a, a metal chair? No, he could. Yeah, he could destroy you with just his crush thing. you with his thighs. Yeah, I'm coming at him with the chair, man. <laughs> hmm. Well, we could do some chair training and make a video about it. Just smack you with a few ch- metal chairs if you I'm want. I'm down. All right. That just sounds like funny. a f- fun Friday afternoon. All right. We'll make a mint bite. We'll make a mint bite about chair training. Chair shots. 
Heck yeah. Actually, wrestling training with uh, Davis Batista. Mm-hmm. Well, we uh, every week we do some recommends on oh, the podcast. Cr- mm. Mm. The problem... But th- this week, we decided we're going to save it for next week for you guys. Okay. Just to build well, up I the anticipation. I can go over what my things. Or you could save it till next week, and I'll watch even <laughs> more, and we'll okay. just get a whole extravagant. Oh, for going. sure. Okay. Well, if you guys want to stick around, I mean, we, you're kind of legally bound to stick around. <laughs> we're not really giving you a choice here, but next that was mint we'll go over double recommends we'll go we'll, we paused it this time because i'm a schlub i'm a schmuck leave in the comments your best hate comment for me all right yeah. leave some real scathing stuff i want to see how some, i don't do my homework i want to see some real burns on this guy next hey, time. let's get some verbal abuse going hey, ethan ethan i'll give you your first one right, right. now you stink oh oh my gosh geez, louise Jeez. I had to do it. You didn't have to go that hard, man. Come on. He's got the trash talk down for the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> He's going against yeah, Macho I mean, Man. You're going to be a natural at the trash talking. Well, with that in mind, we do have some talking points for today. And Ethan's going to... Yes, we do. <laughs> Ethan, you dirty schlub. All right, Why well, don't you kick <laughs> it off? I think we should start off with just a... Gerald's game, you know? I just want to talk about Gerald's game. I've never seen it. <laughs> I don't oh, think I love any of us have seen it. No, I love Gerald's game. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, cool. It's then so you wholesome. Can tell us about it. Well, it's. I mean, <laughs> you've probably seen A Bug's Life by this point in time, and it's this really cute opening short Wait, uh, of this old guy, and he's playing chess, <laughs> basically second. against himself. Um, and it's just, it's like one of their best shorts. No, no. We're, I mean, um, when. The, based on no, Stephen no, King the right novel, movie. Ethan, Ethan, that's the right movie. And, 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 and he handcuffs his wife. No, and, and, no, 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 no. Like, no, no. And then he Ethan, dies on top movie, of her. Movie. You know, and he's like, let's no, play a game. I'm talking about Jerry's game. I'm going to break in the house, and then he has a heart attack. You said Jerry's game. And uh, You've never seen the trailer for Gerald's game? <laughs> it, why would a short need a trailer? It's just No, no, just the trailer, Gerald's game. No. Listen, I think you're the one confused oh, yeah. here. <laughs> I'm very confused right now. Did I? Did I write down this right? I think you're extremely Oh, confused. you're right. Jerry's Game. Yeah. Jerry's Game. Yeah. Oh, wait. That is a Pixar short. Yeah. It's a really Not great one. Not the Stephen King novel. No. I've never seen the Stephen King novel. Well, it's hilarious. Watch the trailer for Gerald's Game. It is a laugh. It's a chuckle to the very end. I guarantee it. I'll have to check it out. I've probably not laughed harder in a movie trailer in my entire life. I don't want to spoil anything. Well, so. I mean, actually, did you see the Mummy trailer where they like <laughs> glitched the audio? Wait, they did? Yeah. They were <laughs> like... Uh, what company made the new mummy? I don't remember. Um, oh, that's Universal. probably not in business anymore. Oh, Universal. Universal. Are they Universal. wanted to make their monster universe and failed yeah. miserably. So Universal uploaded their first trailer for the mummy, except when they uploaded it for the first time, it was like scratch audio. So they just had dialogue. There was no music or sound <laughs> oh, effects. Oh, I remember that. And so it came out and like it starts, the trailer's like a plane crash. So all these birds run into the plane and it's just people going, uh, ah, ooh. <laughs> And then it's Tom then Cruise Tom going, Cruise. Ah! <laughs> just falling. <Yep. laughs> just yeah. <the laughs> it was really funny. And then the actual trailer isn't any less funny because it's that's a ridiculous trailer too. Well, I guess while we're on the topic, what a bunch of fools to think you could remake the Brendan Fraser classic. Mm. I love Tom Cruise as much as the next guy. Mm-hmm. Like I really like Tom Cruise, but like he cannot replace Brendan Fraser. Mm-mm. Not even a little bit. I'm sick. This is disgusting. Universal. You should, should take be that ashamed back. of yourself for even trying. For even trying to up him. I can't. What's wrong it. with you? There's literally. How is the the secret army or the third one better than the new one? Oh, the uh, dragon emperor. Yeah, the dragon emperor. Like the newer one made the dragon emperor look like a masterpiece. Hmm. That movie is a masterpiece. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you right. <laughs> huh. um, <laughs> so further talking points. Yeah. So. Right. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, no, no. Did you have something? No. Oh. I'm going to go check the audio, though. All right. So, <clears throat> I think it's interesting. Especially in modern times, we're finding it a lot more. I think you do not trust those people that are just outwardly completely nice. Like, so nice that just like, wow, they're so nice. Tom Hanks. Ellen. Um, oh, who's the British one? Fat boy. <laughs> James Corden. James Corden, Josh Gad, all these people, all these nice guys, all these super, super duper squeaky clean nice people, they're not. 
I think they're literally like they have to be secretly dark. Dark. <laughs> I'm just gonna say dark. The darkest mm. shade of dark. The darkness. When we refer to the things that they do, we're just gonna say the darkness because we can't prove anything. Definitely. Other than that, they are participating in the darkness. Hmm. Well, I know for a fact about Ellen and her mm-hmm. alleged darkness. Um, you know, I had like a teacher back in high school. Hmm. I won't name them because they don't. Well, they don't work there anymore. So I guess. Oh, Mr. Sanderbankle. Yes, Mr. Sanderbankle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like what he, a used, piece of work. he used to work on Ellen, <laughs> and like he said that like yeah it was like years ago back when we were in high school huh. he was like yeah Ellen was like really weird and she wouldn't let people look at her and like she's just like a okay. terrible boss. You know what's funny? Mm. I always knew that Ellen rumor. You know, like before any of this went down, I always mm-hmm. wondered why, and now yeah. I realize it's because of you because you probably told me that, and I was like, yeah, I what? probably said it, Ellen. Yeah, I was like, I remember hearing it in class, and I was like. Yeah. That's weird, because I thought Ellen was nice, and then I, like, yeah, I looked into it, and I was like, oh, a lot of people are saying this. I mean, but can Ellen be all that bad? She did have damn Daniel on the show. <laughs> I oh. gave him a lifetime supply of white fans, so how bad could she really be? Yeah, and then the guy who, wait, you know what's funny? She gave, literally, the dude that was just standing there, Daniel, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't do anything. He's literally a good dude that was standing there. He just walked around. She gave him a life supply of white fans. You know what she gave the guy who s- made all the videos, made the voice, mm-hmm. did all the work, is basically the content? A surfboard. A surfboard? Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember because she was like, and you like surfing, so here's a surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lifetime I, supply of shoes. Here's a surfboard, kid. N- nice job coming up with all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. It felt like, like a like a last-minute gift. You know, like for someone you don't really know very well. Like, wait, oh, there, you're right. A oh, kid shoot. did film it. <laughs> kid filmed it. What is he like? Uh, surfing? Okay, surfboard. I don't, I don't know. Look at his Instagram. I don't know. Surf picture. All right, get him that. Get him that. I don't care. But yeah, hmm. man, I just can't trust him anymore. Like, even Tom Hanks, this man just moved to Greece, just <laughs> booped out of Dodge. Did he really? Yeah, he was. Uh, well, people started talking about, like, hey, how is, why does he know Epstein? And then he's like, uh. <laughs> he left for Greece. Yeah, hmm. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It seems like this niceness thing, people are starting to realize, like, oh, hmm. it doesn't work 100% of the time. <laughs> Davis, who do you think is a celebrity that is maybe too nice? Too nice? Too nice, and you, it's, like, suspicious. It's a little suspicious how nice they are. Mm, I know I've probably discussed this with Ethan before. Um, Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really blinking right now, Ethan. Who is someone I've talked to? <laughs> Who's someone you've talked? Oh boy. <laughs> well, someone that's that's just overly nice and kind of bubbly. I think James Corden's a good one. James Corden. That you oh, yeah, that's true. Because yeah. I I haven't heard any personally. I haven't heard any rumors about his workspace. Oh, I have. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't heard anything. This so. is the same. Same kind of deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think there's some sick Hollywood, like, you know, Hollywood just loves those people that can really put it on. And or, well, okay, they're actors, dude. Yeah. They're all really good actors. That's the one commonality between them. So, of course, they're all really good at not acting like terrible people. Mm-hmm. Maybe but terrible people are the best actors because they have to act like they're not terrible. Like, they're yeah. not psychopaths, not sociopaths. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, they're kind of tie into what we were talking about earlier for a nice person. What about Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise. Exactly. Have you mm-hmm. What was the one video of him? I think he was on Conan, possibly. Or he was on some talk show. And they were joking around and stuff. And there's just one point where you just see him give this smile and it's like mm-hmm. you know that nice pretty boy smile but you look in yeah. his eyes and they're just dead yeah like the most soulless yep. little beady eyes you've ever seen i think uh well, he has like s- uh, slaves like literal like slave people from the scientology stuff yeah. but we can't we'll, we'll not go into more about that <laughs> i think christian bale <laughs> speaking of that please don't come to my house <laughs> christian bale said once that he inspired um like the character of patrick bateman Mm-hmm. Off of that interview that you're talking about. Oh yeah, I think I remember hearing it. Interesting. Uh, let me. I gotta pull up the quote. Um, 
Yeah. Um, Christian Bale based his Patrick Bateman on Tom Cruise for American Psycho. Uh, it says, and then one day, I don't know who's talking, but it says, and then one day he called me and he had just, he is, uh, obviously Christian Bale and he had been watching Tom Cruise on David Letterman and he just had this very intense friendliness with nothing behind the eyes. Mm -hmm. And he was really taken with this energy. And like, you look at the picture and like, literally he looks like a demon. (laughs) I can't find it, but. I'm sure it's you can find it on the internet. Just Google Tom Cruise on Letterman. Well, I think um, which which one's the fake laughing? Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Well, I think like there's a difference when you're a celebrity between being like like a lot of celebrities are seen as like really cold. Like when mm-hmm. you talk to them, because it's like, oh man, he's not as friendly as I thought he was gonna be. Yeah. Like you can be cold. Like I just re- I just watched um the Last Dance. I've been talking about it with the Michael Jordan documentary. And like, he doesn't sign everybody's autograph or whatever, but that's not because he's being mean. It's just, there's a billion people that want yeah. Michael Jordan's autograph. He just has to take, he has yeah. to limit it. You just can't, you can't take that personally, but like when it's your own staff, you know, or like I've heard things about, you know, when you go on an interview for like daytime TV and like the host is just really yeah. like non, you're supposed to be interviewing them, but like, they're just really kind of cold and they don't really we were, oh. we were watching that was on daytime tv that was just throwing it through a loop do you remember comedians do that all the yeah there's like a few that have done eric that andre? no it wasn't eric andre but just oh go, just, it, oh yeah it was mark norman yeah mark norman yeah. that man is amazing yeah i've he's seen a that. funny individual he's yeah i yeah but i think you know there's people like ellen from what i've heard who are just cold yeah. all the time and like it truly is just an act like when you're on stage also when people get full of themselves and develop a superiority complex mm-hmm. it's like step one to just becoming a terrible person yeah. <laughs> you gotta balance the hype people don't yeah. let people hype you up too don't much let people hype you up too much it's like college take students. yourself down a peg <laughs> college students go on our roast me get hyped up more a lot <laughs> people i knew in college <laughs> that i met they need to be taken down a peg because it's honestly ridiculous. Well, <clears throat> talking about, you know, the fame, the celebrities, Drake, the freaking snake, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let, let's just go in deep. I mean, I'll start. I hate Drake. I think he is a he's a hack. He's a sap. He's not a good musician. Other people write his music. He's lazy. He's uh, Canadian. He's a tool of the music industry to <laughs> just Canadian. pop out. Yeah. pump out pop nonsense trash to just get the people to listen to and make money uh-huh. and he's canadian he's not even really like the whole rap guys he puts on sorry you're literally a canadian you're like basically a white person hmm. let's not let's not let's not get this mixed up it's pretty spicy take ethan <laughs> i think we need some milk after that <laughs> okay. i have felt bad for drake exactly one time <laughs> and it was when he was at the Tyler the create like Tyler the Creators Fest. Do you remember that? I googled. I cracked. That a was smile. pretty funny. <laughs> it was okay. It was funny on the inside. I was like, dude, that's gotta be so hard to go up on st- be Drake. And but go he's up. Drake. He deserves no, I know. to get knocked down. He does. He does. I think I felt he can go with a little tough time in his life. I felt bad more in the way of like, oh, that's such a hard thing for anyone to do. I was like, oh, what? A th- that's terrible. But then yeah. my brain was like, that's Drake. So I feel less bad about it. But yeah, I really i I don't understand the appeal of his music. <laughs> I feel like, you know, just at that at that level, like, why are you a fan of Drake? I've never met anyone who's a fan of Drake that, like, you know, Drake really speaks to me. Like, yeah, do you really well, they get can't it? give you legitimate reasons. There is no reason to like Drake. And Wait, then, can, can we talk about any of this stuff with his uh, certain friendship? Oh, dude, of course. Celebrity? Well, that's another reason I don't support freaking <laughs> pedophiles, mate. Sorry. No, yeah. That's the I think that's allegedly. I guess really that's the official thing you have to say whenever you bring up that. I guess word. you can say allegedly and you have to I mean obviously you have to anytime there's But no. not really allegedly. He got really close with Millie Bobby Brown. I feel that like part's not alleged. Have we talked about Well, no, yeah, that's not alleged. I mean, I don't think it's been confirmed whether anything happened or not, but No, still the, very sheer, inappropriate. the, the sheer fact of it is the fact that to like, it's public. She's like, "Oh, I love Drake. Oh, we hang, we hang out, we talk." And like, he's like, "Yeah, we have texts. I 
tell her about how to make it big or whatever. And how like, to get boys or something. It just sounds, oh. <laughs> it just sounds weird. <laughs> Sorry, whenever I get a gosh darn it. Whenever I start talking about pedophiles, Justin, I get really amped up. Hold on, I gotta do this. It, it reminds me of like um, Sensor. of like when you hear about like college dudes dating like college freshmen, mm-hmm, you know that yeah. sort of thing, or uh, dating like high school freshmen, you know. Yeah. Like all that sort of stuff. That it seems like the exact same scenario to me. Like he just has that like ultra. He has that vibe to him. Yeah. Almost like a frat boy kind of vibe, you know. Mm-hmm. S- s- to me, he has that that vibe of like, you know, that like just like that, that perfectly just cut dude that, sh- you know, slick. Mm-hmm. Like he's probably gets that haircut every day or whatever. Just like that really slick, like, sexual criminal. <laughs> 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 but above all, bad music. Just bad, bad, bad music just above awful all. Awful music. <laughs> I think we actually have, now that we're saying it, I think we have talked about it on the podcast before, possibly, but I really don't care because yeah. it's like, I don't know. Why? Well, people sleep on that. I, I remember w- a good friend of mine, uh, like one of the only like legitimate arguments we had where I got like heated and started like... Mm-hmm. Getting you know getting pretty pretty mad and I don't really get it mad in arguments. Like you were ever. mad, I remember. Yeah, he was there. It was literally this guy was like, "There's nothing wrong with what he's doing, like talking to her, mm-hmm. and the way he's interacting with Millie Bobby Brown. There's nothing wrong with that." And he's literally only saying that because it was Drake. It made my brain yeah. feel like I was having a stroke. Yeah, I mm-hmm. could not comprehend it. Like the the mental gymnastics that a Drake fan goes through, like because they do. I, I this guy was a big Drake fan, and he's mm-hmm. basically just going through mental gymnastics. He has since recovered, though. Yeah, thankfully. he has since said I was completely wrong in that argument, and you know, I was he mm-hmm. was deserving of a little heat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, as long as you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I mean, anybody. Like, how would you? Have we talked about being a fan of anything on the podcast? Because like, f- being like enjoying something, that's fine. But like, yeah. being a fan is like a whole other. I mean, I'd say I'm a Dune fan. Yeah. That's about... But would like, you... As far as real fandom goes, like, really getting excited, I really only get excited about Dune mm-hmm. these days. That's what I mean. So, like, I re- I love Lord of the Rings. Malibu. I don't know that I'd say I'm a Lord of the Rings, like, fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. For like, sure. this new Amazon Lord of the Rings that's coming out, if it ends up being bad, I'm not going to, like rage and like burn all my amazon merch or whatever no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that way <laughs> or like i won't go to the grave defending really anything well i mean there's fans culture. and there's toxic fans yeah. what does it mean to be a fan that's what i mean so like you can enjoy drake like some people do if you enjoy drake because you actually like his music and like or even there's a whatever. few songs you like you don't have a lot of people don't like entire artist discography you know they mm-hmm. like like three drake songs that's fine. fine. <laughs> Whatever. But like when like you were saying, like when you like defend this dude yeah. on a hill, no matter what no matter what he's done, like, okay, no, you don't understand. I'm a Drake fan. So yeah. also you just gotta be aware. It's like the same with Mike with the Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you just, you just gotta be aware. Mm-hmm. It just with anything. You just gotta be aware. Even when you watch a Roman Polanski movie, you can still watch it. You you may be not gonna be like I'm a huge Roman Polanski fan. No, you probably yeah. just watched his movies, but you gotta be aware of what the dude did. I just watched um, Annie Hall for mm-hmm. the first time. Mm. Great mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, great. I movie. really loved it. But I also the whole time I was like, this is made by Woody Allen. Yeah, <laughs> and I had to know that. You know, but it's also kind of good that you watched it and had that in your head. Yeah. at the same time. And I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna think about you know. I'm not going to... I'll I'll try to watch the movie. And I enjoy the movie. It's a good movie. Not many people have the tenacity to do that, Justin. You're a pretty unique individual. In wow. Yeah. I mean, it's separating the art from the artist. Exactly. Yeah. As mm-hmm. a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. For a lot of people. If there's anything to take away, kids. Separate the art from the artist. It's very important. Yep. And then, yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything that's been talked about. I mean... A lot by... A lot of people. Yeah. It's a hard thing to do. I mean, something I think relevant nowadays, we've even brought him up, Lovecraft, I feel like is coming up a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just really like, that's a hard one, you know? Because <laughs> you can't deny that the dude had a huge influence on sci-fi mm-hmm. and what it is today. And, and you can't just yeah. delegitimize that. You're, you, you're destroying an entire genre. 
you know you're 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 just undermining an entire body yeah. of work for like how long, how long ago was he writing? He was like in the 30s, I think. 80 years ago? 90? Yeah, just about. 80, 90 years ago? Like, uh-huh. he's influenced the genre. Yeah, but you can also understand what he was about. You can even analyze the books from that perspective. Uh-huh. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I think, and it, you know, if tomorrow, you know, something came out and they were like, oh, it turns out Steven Spielberg, that dude was straight up trash like if you figured it out you know are you never gonna watch jaws again like are you never gonna watch indiana jones like you're probably still gonna watch it but i don't know it's just yeah but what about every movie inspired by jaws too and every movie inspired because that's the thing too is like (laughs) yeah some people would be like oh things inspired by love so aliens canceled now Uh like is that the next step yeah i don't know because geiger took influence from lovecraft yeah, and Ridley Scott liked Lovecraft. That it's not a good movie anymore. I don't know. <laughs> Racist by association. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it happened. Jaws happened, so you couldn't be like, "Well, I don't know. I didn't like the director, so I yeah, guess, I guess Jaws there. didn't happen." I mean, yeah, it didn't happen. It was in Universal a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Jaws isn't real. You didn't know that? No, I Dude, thought that it was came real. out like two months ago. That was a real shark. Jaws 2 is real, though. <laughs> yeah, Jaws 2 is a sure. documentary. Jaws 2 is based on a true story. <laughs> mm. All right. Let's talk about a little bit of the Kanye antics that have been going on, because I feel like the Kanye saga has been <laughs> getting deeper and more layered, more nuanced <laughs> than ever. Mm. I'll say this. I mean, well, l- let's set up a little timeline, I guess, of the most recent Kanye okay. antics. We had... Failed run for presidency because of mismanagement, disorganization. Easy. He had <laughs> mental breakdowns at the rallies. Yep. And I think now there's just, is he just kind of in hiding? Or are they just kind of like keeping him behind closed doors? Wait, like? can you explain the mental breakdowns? I heard nothing of that. Okay, well, Kanye has, you know, struggled with bipolar. Uh, Bipolarism. Uh-huh. And so basically he's, you know, take, having these rallies. He's all hyped up. And he just loses it. Like at one of these rallies, he's just like, I almost, you know, like I was, I wanted Kim to get an abortion and like just start saying the most wacky, crazy stuff. And like, I want to, uh, my, 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 the Kardashians are trying to kill me and like they're having me trapped in the house. <laughs> just this, just a nuts. He just Oof. went nuts. <laughs> and like, since then, like, the, the, that's what, that's why the campaign kind of like dropped off. You uh-huh. don't hear much about it anymore because he's like having legit mental issues. <laughs> well, I'll say this much: his uh, "Jesus Is King" album, underwhelming. Underwhelming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wasn't a huge fan, you know. But you know who was a huge fan? Every single person at my college, <laughs> <laughs> nonstop, every day. So that's what I have to say about that. But you know what else was underwhelming? What? Graduation, surprisingly. Graduation. Oh, his album? Yeah. I liked graduation. I mean, yeah, like I mean, I just expected way more. Oh, I like yeah. thought it was gonna be like woof, but it was okay. Well, that's not. fair. <laughs> See, I had no expectations when I heard it for the first time, and I was like, yeah, "That's pretty good." Though I will admit that you know every rap album that came out after that rap album is that album. Yeah, <laughs> for exactly. like a decade. Oh, but yeah. Ethan, the real question is: Do you believe my beautiful dark twisted fantasy deserves a seven? <laughs> How dare he give it a six? <laughs> How dare he? It was it, it was a six, not even a seven? He gave it a six. <laughs> How dare he? Are you talking about Fantino? Mr. Yeah. Meloni himself. All right, well, actually, can we, can we, can I give you a hot take on Anthony Fantino? Oh, I, I welcome it, please. <laughs> like, I, 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 I've watched his videos. I don't as much, I, I hate this guy. I think he is Whoa. a pumped up, he's just, so he's just, he has a, a very high opinion of him. So I'm trying to not say certain <laughs> words. I'm trying okay. to wiggle around him. Okay. <laughs> he's a very disillusioned man who thinks very highly of himself. And I think he lets his big-headed notions get in the way of his musical opinions way too much. Hmm. And he sits on his high horse a lot. And there's a really specific word I want to use that really sums it all up, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely comes across that way. And all his, like... 
I heard about him a little bit, and I was like, oh, I'll check him out. A brick. And I watched him. Rhymes with brick. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. <laughs> I can think. <laughs> Put two and two together. Um, no, but I checked him out, and I was like, he kind of seems like he thinks he's the smartest person yeah. of all time when it comes to music. Condescending. That's what I was trying to grasp. There at. you go. That's a good word for it. Seems condescending. And it's just kind of yeah. older than that guy. I've never met the guy, so I don't know. But True. from his videos. From his content. Yeah. Or like, you know, j- there's even the meme of just like, like, oh, well, Fantano said it was bad, so I guess it is bad. Yeah. Like, like, don't keep hyping this dude up. Like, if you like an album, albums are hard to rate anyways. Yeah. You know? What's the thing is like, and, and sometimes I can just tell like when he's talking about his critique, I can, it's, he's blowing smoke out of his butt. Like mm-hmm. he's just saying random words and trying to sound smart sometimes. And I don't vibe with people like that. Like when you mm-hmm. just try and analyze something, especially maybe it's just a critic kind of complaint too. like people who mm-hmm. are really into like the fact that they're a critic yeah. and get really frou-frou with it and use big words and try and be all smart about it. It's mm-hmm. just kind of like, you're not a musician, man. Like, well, at some point, if you really don't know. Well, no, about. no, no. I mean, okay. So I, I have a lot of things I agree with yeah. in mm-hmm. there and what you're saying and all that. But, I mean, I've been, I mean, I haven't watched a Fantano video for a while now. But mm-hmm. I used to be pretty, like, religiously into all his videos, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I really miss his meme channel. That one was really mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. But um, for me, Fantano is someone who has been definitely plagued by his success. Mm-hmm. In that his fan base is, is very similar to like a, I would describe it as like a Rick and Morty type of situation. Yeah. Um, I see that. Like, back, like, if you watch, like, his older videos from, like, 2014 and stuff like that, he just seems like this, you know, kind of young guy just talking about music. And, like, y- there's no, like, inflated personality. Yeah. There's no antics, really. He's just talking about music, and it's pretty good. Well, I will say, I did like the older Fantano yeah. content. No, a he, more. he mm-hmm. has good opinions, and he has... He does have real knowledge of music. I mean, if you listen to any of his couch or chest of stuff, even though most of it is definitely funnier in nature. Mm-hmm. He definitely knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has no... I wouldn't call him, you know, just a complete know-nothing when it comes to music. He definitely knows what Something. to do. Yeah. You know, theory and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, going back to his fandom, um, you know, them hyping up everything he says and like pushing it on to people like oh Fantano said it so yeah. it must be true and all that that's definitely like hurt kind of his image I mean I, I would say it's definitely hurt his image because yeah. there have mm-hmm. been multiple times you know on Twitter in some of his videos where he says you know when people are like attacking his opinions and stuff or like oh you shouldn't be doing this or, like, you know, critiquing music, like, it's not good for anything. He's like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, my opinions don't r- really matter. You know, they're my personal opinions. They're not, you know, this isn't mm-hmm. me saying, oh, this album sucks. This is me saying, mm-hmm. yeah, I wasn't a big fan of this album, but, you you know, you don't have to take it as, yeah. like, this, like, textbook kind of take on it you know at the end of the day it's his opinion you can ignore it yeah. if you want and there's no big deal you know you can just I don't know mm-hmm. I think a lot of people gave in to like his toxic kind of fan base yeah. and now he's just kind of I am I mean I'm sure dealing with all of it has definitely yeah. not helped him at all well, the, the air of pretentiousness has grown definitely and that's that's the thing that boils my yeah. mind the most is pretentiousness is just like oof it's like anthema to me mm-hmm. I'm mm. just going, I cringe <laughs> I cringe <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know it's a weird it's a very w- strange thing I don't know I think mm. it's just the internet is slowly yeah. decomposing into this wretched mass and everyone is kind of suffering from it 
Yeah. Except for that was Mint, still the best podcast oh, on air. Thank oh, you so thank much. you so much. And also, we're, we're, ooh, we're not critics. You know, we talk about stuff, but we're not critics. Cause no, I, I would don't really never like critics. I don't like the idea of them. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think of movies. You know, I'll yeah. be like, hey, this is what I thought of this one, but I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to be good. like, hey, don't check this out because I didn't like it. So it's probably going to be bad. If you're a, if you're a critic and you suffer from uh, big headedness, go watch Ratatouille. Yeah, literally, true. literally. I was just it was just on before I like got here and I saw it like a month ago. And I don't rewatch movies like in the span of a couple months because I yeah. like to let it. But I, w- I was watching like the last 30 minutes of Ratatouille and I didn't even have a problem with it. That movie is actually a masterpiece. Oh, it's a phenomenal film. It's yeah. It's been my favorite Pixar film from the beginning. I think it's becoming like more, like it's becoming way less of a hot take to say that that's like the best Pixar yeah. movie. Like a lot of people recently like have people been like. People just come into and be like, oh yeah. Yeah, have been, oh wait, hold on. This is like actually one of the best yeah. ones, if not maybe the best one. You're telling me it beats Jerry's game? <laughs> oh, well, see, the thing about that is I don't think it holds a yeah. candle. Well, I think it also has just like, of all the messaging in the Pixar movies, mm-hmm. I feel like it does have like some of the most standout no, yeah. philo- philosophy and kind of lessons to be teaching. I really love Ratatouille. There's a whole, I haven't watched the whole thing yet, but Shafrilis Productions has like an hour long video <laughs> on Ratatouille. And, like, why it's Pixar's, like, best thing they've ever done, basically. But I just, like, with Anton Ego, that character, I love it. Because he's, like, you know, at first glance, his character is just, oh, he's a critic, and he's never had very good food. Mm -hmm. And then he has some really good food that reminds him of home, and that makes him a nice guy. But, like, no, it's more about, like, a guy, a critic of anything, really, who's just become weathered down Mm -hmm. with all this commercialized stuff and as someone who likes movies a lot i relate to that because i'm like oh like all the gusto's like hot pocket or whatever Mm -hmm. that they're selling he's just like this is all so gross and he like kind of wears it as like i'm better than you because i remember you know and he can't really put a pin on why he thinks things are better the way he envisions them but he just knows this isn't right and then he has this awesome meal and that's like literally one of the best pixar scenes ever when he flashes back because he's like oh now I remember why I love food, because it like makes you feel good. Well, that, he thinks Cousteau is being disingenuous. He thinks he's, mm-hmm. you know, his whole everyone can cook shtick. He thinks that that's an act. Yeah. He thinks he's a fraud when he's not. Like, and I think he realized at the end, like, oh, he was right. Literally, anyone can cook, even a yeah. freaking rat. <laughs> Basically, Anton Ego is the best character in Pixar history. Ratatouille is maybe yeah. the best Pixar Remy, movie. Remy, the boy, Ginger. Vote Remy for president 2020, everybody. <laughs> I may be a little bit late saying this, but I've never seen Ratatouille. Dude, believe me. Believe it. Ratatouille is actually fantastic. We'll watch it soon. Don't worry. Yeah. And your dad will watch it with us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I hope that wasn't spoiling Ratatouille. I didn't know you hadn't yeah, seen it. Sp- uh, he'll probably well, forget. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Still watch it. Um, How much? How long have we been doing this? Oh, a good amount of time. I guess we could we could pop in one more topic if you want. Oh yeah, yeah. We can make thirty minutes. Oh dope. I thought it was just like we've just been talking about so much stuff. I yeah. thought like, oh man, we've been talking for hours. Uh, well <coughs> in light of the new Call of Duty Black Ops trailer. Yes. I have been doing a deep dive into the lectures and ideas of the man Yuri Bezmanov. Who if you don't know what, he was a ex KGB, right? That defected so, yeah. to the United States in the 80s, right? Yeah, midst of the Cold War mm. or something. Maybe 70s? Early, early 80s early 80s, or 80s late, late 70s. Late 70s the midst of the Cold period. War? Yeah. Okay. So defects, right, and kind of starts telling Americans what the Russians are up to, like what their philosophy as far as like covert subversion is. And it is some very interesting... Uh, talking points uh-huh. and uh you know that that <laughs> holds some water today <laughs> mm. Mm. interesting yes yeah you, have you seen the the clips or no. you yeah you saw the trailer well i saw you? the first one you saw I, the first trailer yeah well i saw it once what'd you think i thought it was interesting yeah it was an interesting ad for a video game in general mm-hmm. like it's 
kind of hardly about the video game. It's just no, about yeah. the Cold War. It's interesting. It's like a yeah. unique way to advertise something. Basically. And keep in mind, kids, these are just conspiracy theories here, you know? Just propaganda. Nothing uh, Which we're, of, of course, truth. great at. So. <laughs> we're just spreading lies here, so take it with a grain of salt. But basically, good old Yuri was saying, you know, during the Cold War era, the Russians actively you know working to subvert america and kind of try and make uh, uh destroy us basically mm-hmm. but their way wasn't going to be you know through military force or bombs or anything like that they were going to do it through kind of these covert ways of changing society and changing the way people think and act and all this kind of stuff and he kind of lays out this 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 four-step process right of um the steps that you know they can kind of uh they can input certain stimuli into a, a, a nation and then get it to destabilize and collapse, basically. Mm-hmm. And this conspiracy theory is basically on on the time frame that Mr. Bezmenov was talking about. If the Russians were trying to do their strategies on the U.S., we're in about the time when their efforts would be coming to fruition. Hmm. And we would be in the kind of the late stage three of like chaos basically we're in the end game now the end game and the, and the steps for all you don't know is demoralization right and then um destabilization crisis and normalization mm-hmm. so meaning demoralization means um basically you know you're going to send people and you're going to start spreading ideas that are contrary to the ideas that make up a certain population. Mm Because, you know, every culture, every people has an ideology that kind of formed their group of people and has carried them to the point they're at. If you inject the antithesis of those ideas into a society, whether it be through, you know, education or anything, then, you know, things will start to fray at the seams. People will start to see things in a very uh, biased lens. Mm -hmm. People will start to become more and more disillusioned disillusioned to the point where they can't agree on basically anything anymore. Do you have anything to, to say, Davis? I know you're also a big history buff. Um, well, I mean, run me back what you were saying. Well, do you know much about KGB efforts? KGB to efforts to destabilize to de- the United demoralize States? the United States? Do you know anything um, about their, their, their programs? Um, none of the, like, more kind of secretive stuff, because... They were pretty good at keeping secrets. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. The KGB could keep a secret. <laughs> um, but, I mean, just on their, on the bigger sort of scale, I mean, they did do a lot of stuff during, like, you know, Vietnam especially yeah. to demoralize the nation by doing all that, you know, arming of people and leading to soldier deaths and the stuff you learn in so it's a, a tried and tested method yeah no <laughs> they they have definitely i wouldn't be surprised if they've perfected a way of just getting straight to the kind of core of american ideology and just ripping it apart yeah well it's, it's very interesting so that's that's demoralization right uh-huh. destabilization is once people are riled up once people are disagreeing a lot and kind of at each other's throats that's the so the goal is to basically turn a nation on itself, turn people on each other, get people divided. Uh-huh. Stage two is kind of like hype that up, get people to start going at each other, um, maybe spur on events that might destabilize things, right? Like uh, would be a destabilizing event, like a uh, like a bomb going off, like a terrorist attack or something, uh-huh. some sort of event that kind of gets people, oh whoa whoa crazy stuff's going on, chaos, uh-huh. and basically. If people have been primed and the right, you know, stimulus has been put in and the right action happens, then bada boom, you go into crisis mode. Mm-hmm. When total chaos breaks out. Would you say it's chaotic out there these days, boys? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> yeah, actually, what are you talking about? It's peaceful. So maybe we're not in this uh, chaotic stage. Maybe that that's up to you guys to decide. But Uh huh. Well, <laughs> chaos is relative. <laughs> It's not chaotic in here. It's not chaotic right now. Where I'm at in life, it's not super chaotic. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. But but I understand <laughs> life is really, really chaotic for a lot of people out there. Yeah. So. Especially at the moment. 
but you're saying this third crisis stage is where everything is just it's basically where the the tinder has been set and it all goes alight right yeah and in the chaos there's usually going to be a shuffle a struggle for power Uh and usually through violent uh uprising coup d'etat this happens all the time revolutions regime changes Uh like dime a dozen you can look up many instances of this kind of thing happening basically this regime change happens the new ideology that they've injected takes over the you know more russian ideology Uh and bada boom it becomes normalized normalization and that's the last stage which can last forever basically uh and i think like a famous russian quote is the normalization started like we when they um rolled the tanks into czechoslovakia and they started normalization <laughs> that was what they were calling it <laughs> nice and it's when you know the new order becomes the normal order uh-huh. and the old it's gone <laughs> yeah hmm. interesting things to think about kids interesting things interesting. but uh, but who knows we could be wrong we couldn't we could just he could be wrong we could be nowhere even close it to could step be. three i don't know we could be on step negative two or we could be on step five S- step five Here's what I think. I think that the Russians succeeded and they've already taken over. We've been lis- living in the Russian-run um, United States for 25 years. What makes you say that? You didn't know? No, I didn't know. That's why I'm asking. Bill Clinton, Bush, and Obama were all KGB agents. They came from Russia. They weren't even born here. Okay. They were literally born in Yugoslavia. Oh, interesting. Did, did you know Obama, Obama was literally born in the Siberian wastes? Wow. Like literally in the wastes yes, of Siberia? literally. Reindeer hunters raised him. <laughs> reindeer hunters. And then they sent him to the United States to be the great president. You will learn great American accent. Bill Clinton? You Guy grew up in an igloo with the Inuits. You will be like you are from <laughs> Chicago. Inuits aren't like anywhere <laughs> near Russia. Well, th- they've been down there through the ice bridge. There yeah, is no more ice bridge. No, they know there's a secret one. <laughs> <laughs> they only they know about it. The ice detour. <laughs> it's, 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 it's actually ice tunnel that goes underwater. That Super sounds sick. so cool, actually. <laughs> An ice tunnel underwater. Yeet. Could you imagine? It'd be so cool. And just a bunch of Eskimos going down there. It's like, yeah. What's up? Eskimos be, and Russians. I'd be cool. <laughs> I'd be down to go. I'd be down to go through that tunnel. Anyway. Hmm. We'll get to more uh, more light stuff, boys. <laughs> just God. wanted to tease your brains with some. With some. <laughs> just just <laughs> destroy all of the future of America. Yeah, that was just a nice mental appetizer. Yeah, yeah. That was Whoa. just a little. Well, we gotta have some serious talk. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, you gotta eat. You gotta eat the uh, the burnt part of the pizza to get to the cheese. <laughs> you know what they say. All right. <laughs> well. Have a a good final conversation. I'd like to go through and talk about presidents. I thought you said we were gonna get uplifting on this bit. What well, U.S. presidents are uplifting. Okay. You literally, just were <laughs> saying three were KGB agents. <laughs> hey, hey, okay, wait, wait, wait. I literally before I prefaced that whole segment by saying everything we say on this show is practically a lie. You it's can't trust anything we say. Okay. Take it with a grain of salt. All right, for sure. <laughs> We may okay. talk about real things, but our opinions on those things. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we could talk about presidents then. My favorite president um, is the boy, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Speak softly. Carry a big stick. It's probably my actual favorite. Well, I don't know. I re- Here's the thing about presidents, all right? Let's get this yeah, up front. Let's get this out of the way. I know essentially nothing about any of their political stances. Or any of their... Oh, yeah. I Listen, I took classes to learn all this stuff. I don't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I really... I tried. I remembered it for the test. And then I was like, all right, I'll keep well, a we couple... We got you covered on that. I'll stuff. keep a couple of cool facts. You know? Probably if you mentioned something, I'd be like, that sounds familiar. But, like, when I say Teddy Roosevelt is my favorite president, I mean Teddy Roosevelt is my favorite person who was ever president. <laughs> <laughs> He's just such a... he Like, look at him. Well, why, why don't we make this a conversation about your favorite president on a personal level? Oh, I already know who Ethan's is. <laughs> Yo, do you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I liked George Washington a lot as a person. Just like the stories that people would tell about him. Mm. He was like this giant, like ripped dude who just intimidated people. Like you saw this guy 
and you'd literally be scared stiffless. You like you 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 couldn't even move because he was just so intimidating. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> scared stiff. I mean, <laughs> you're stiffless. You are without stiff when you. No more stiff for you. You literally are so intimidated by this guy, you invent new words to <laughs> say. But Teddy Roosevelt was a pretty good character too. He was a G. Funny guy. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I love me some Lyndon B. Johnson, the man. He's literally the most alpha president. And he was just he was a sleaze ball. He was he was just the most crazy nut job dude. I'm not gonna say a lot of the stuff he did here because obviously, you know, there might be kids watching. But Lyndon B. Johnson, look up some of his antics. If anything, he liked to go uh, caca with the Oval Office bathroom door open just uh-huh. as like a power play move. Yeah. Just take, you just take a mad deposit. Well, I've heard he's an <laughs> interesting fellow just, yeah, on a personal level. Plus the fact, dude, dude he could have gotten JFK assassinated to become the president. That is always a small possibility, and that's super cool. I don't think that's a small <laughs> possibility. I think that's a pretty <laughs> decently sized possibility. Like, I, I'd love to think that he was like, all right, let's do it, boys. I Obviously, he wasn't. Obviously, the CIA mm-hmm. came to him and was like, we're doing this, and you're going to be the president. And he was kind of like, okay, <laughs> oh, just don't kill me. Uh, well, Again, that's just a game theory, kids. Yeah. <laughs> we, Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what happened. I don't know. Believe what the history books tell you. Favorite. <laughs> Especially those written by Gerald B. Monkeys. Thank you. <laughs> what about you, Davis? You got any favorite favorite presidentes? I am Ethan now. <laughs> so, does this just continue? Yeah, we'll just keep going. <laughs> just act like he isn't here, which is what I've been doing this whole time. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Uh, favorite presidents. Mm-hmm. Um, heck, I mean, gotta give a shout out to, you know, the boy, Mr. Thomas Jefferson. Oh, Quite a, yeah. Uh, important lad, I think. Tommy Jeff. He's still one of the last people to have, like, actually, like, a good vision for America, in my opinion. Hmm. Um, you know, keeping it mostly agricultural. You know, away from industry and stuff because hasn't industry just been great for this nation? <laughs> it really has been. Yeah. I think industry is like the best thing that's ever happened to us <laughs> as a Super nation. Super great. <laughs> and he was just a cautious dude. Like, wait, like in ca- for anyone who doesn't know, quick history lesson. Thomas Jefferson uh, was responsible for the Louisiana Purchase. In yep. which the United States acquired most of what is now the United States. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's one of my favorite history moments. Is that Napoleon, like, basically gave it to us for like two dollars? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Oh, you want the half of this entire continent? Okay." Okay. You're like, "All right." Oh, oh you fool! I got two dollars now. Yeah. But yeah, but so like yeah, like f- from basically every perspective. It was a good deal that anyone would immediately take. Uh But Jefferson was like, hmm, you know, does a president actually have the power to do this sort of thing? Uh Like, is this something I should be doing or no? And he was super cautious. He was on the fence about it to, like, I think the very last minute. And um, I thought that was just, you know, admirable. Yeah, he took it seriously. He realized he's not a king. He's a man that's responsible for the people. Also, the importance of his office and not tarnishing it and making yeah. it doing something messed up that someone else could use and it's an excuse to do that. I mean. Exactly, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, I feel President. like those, those early presidents really had to think through a lot of what they did. Except John Adams. Those early presidents so had to think through their precedents really thoughtfully, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> I they mean, did. yeah, they weren't, yeah, because they, were they knew they were they setting, setting precedents. precedents yeah. yeah. He said, okay, well, everyone after us is going to look at what we did and say, okay, well, they did it. So and every precedence, precedence is going to be a little different. Uh-huh. I mean, the office is going to shift. It's true. It's too true. At what point 
does the presidents make the presidency into a whole new thing than it was before? That depends on the precedence of the previous president. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> Are you confused yet? <laughs> Are you confused? Is this confusing? Precisely. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a great podcast. Roll it's credits. A real it's great. Good to have you on, Mr. Davis Batista. Oh, thank a real you. pleasure. It was, it was, good luck with your honor. Good luck with your fight. Oh, Oh, um, with Macho Man? With Macho do you want to plug Man. social media, or do you have any projects you're working on? I guess we could do that, yeah, yeah. Um, social, no, basically no social media. Oh, I dropped man, all okay. that stuff. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm working on good it. Good for you, man. Yeah, no, it's it's been life-changing. Um, I don't know. Always working on music. Hopefully right. I'll have an EP out soon. All right, well, we'll, we'll get okay. a shout-out for that EP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any ideas on names, or... Um, you think you can tell the people about it to get them hi- hyped? I mean, one of the at least band names I was throwing around, which should hopefully give it an idea of the music, was um, Cosmic Super Baby. Mm, nice. So just, you know, That's ruminate great. on that, you know, let okay. the feelings flow. And We uh, will definitely listen to some Cosmic Super Baby. Yeah. We might even review the album when it comes out. <laughs> On Dolphin Division. Hi, Hi everyone. Dolphin Division. Dolphin-y Division. <laughs> Tano. Division Tano here. It's time for a review of the new Cosmic Super Baby. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Not actually like hearing it being said. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Well, thank you guys for watching. That was Mint. Uh, if you want to see some more uh, great podcasts with some great pod guests, hit that, hit, hit, hit that subscribe button. It deserves it. Subscribe for more advice on stonk investment Uh and bonds. Yep. And insider trading. Share this. And Robinhood.com strategies for success. Share this video with five people. If you don't, uh, a ghost will come to your house. Hoogie woogie. You'll be haunted. You'll be haunted by hoogie woogie, the ghost. And if you share it, you'll get instant good luck. The gulag ghost. And (laughs) $10,000. And ten thousand dollars. Help! I'm a Nigerian prince. You need to subscribe to Dolphin Division in order to free me from Please. this prison. Please. <laughs> Please, I beg Please. of you. The Congo, the people, they have me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. All right. See Later. you guys. I love you. Bye.